what if instead of just paying for membership and you only gain the benefits, but then there's no benefit for the fact that you've had loyalty. There's no benefit for the fact that you've done anything else. And what if you treated it more like season tickets? If I bought Habs or Canadians, you know, hockey season tickets, I can buy them every year and I could probably resell them for more because there's more demand than there is supply of tickets. But what if you could do that at our farm? I want to see my purchasing of the shares of this farm go in and go in as non-taxable money because you're buying, we're raising capital by selling shares. And that share value, just like the share values on the market, like buying a share of Tesla or Walmart or whatever it is, can rise. The ironic piece about what an NFT is. And I'm gonna explain what an NFT is very quickly for those who don't understand. NFTs are known as non-fungible tokens. So I'm gonna read the definition off Wikipedia. A non-fungible token is a unit of data stored on a digital ledger called a blockchain that certifies a digital asset to be, a un uh, to be unique and therefore not interchangeable. NFTs can be used to prevent items such as photos, videos, audio, and other types of digital files um, they can be used to represent items such as, but the interesting thing is that they also allow access to any copy of the original file. However, it's not restricted to the buyer of the NFT. While f copies of these uh, digital items are available for anyone to obtain, AKA you can download a picture on, on Google, but the owner of the rights of that picture can be tracked via an NFT and on the blockchain, meaning it's validated. And what that means by tracked on the blockchain is it's validated by the fact that all the computers that are connected to the blockchain, whether that be the Bitcoin blockchain or the Ethereum blockchain, are validating that this address, aka this wallet, aka this person, owns these rights or this content or this title. Now I say the word title because in the world of real estate, one of the things you have to acquire when you're buying land is the deed of the land, meaning you're the owner, it's under your name, registered at the city, and the governance system that we use for doing that is the city and the urbanism department at the city. Now that's great, but that doesn't scale properly when you're trying to build an eco-village that essentially is on farmland, meaning we're not residential. For us to become residential, we would either have to rezone the land from agricultural to residential, which has a bunch of red tape and a bunch of different things, and for us to get to rezoning that, it would cost us an enormous amount of money. So therefore we're gonna be back at the problem of scaling at the pace of the owner who can make the developments and raise money and do all those things. Now I could do that. I know people who are willing to be an investor in this, but if I have to do that and if I take their money or if I'm gonna build an agreement with them, I also have to hand out that money to somebody who might not be the perfect fit for the community, which obviously I don't wanna do and I wouldn't do, or, might have a very different incentive than the people who are running the community itself because of just their wealth gap, right? Like somebody isn't more valuable just because they have more money to our community, right? The artist or the electrician is equally valuable in my eyes as is the farmer, as is the other people in the community because we all have a role because it takes a village to build a village. And you'll find out very fast if the garbage man's, how fast the garbage man's value is if he or she doesn't show up right? The second our services end, we start to see the problems that come. Like if your, your toilet gets clogged, all of a sudden the value of a freaking plumber skyrockets, right? So that's why I said in the last podcast, but here's the thing. What's interesting about NFTs is that not only can it attribute to a digital asset, but it can attribute to something else like membership. Now, NFTs are a craze in the world of art because it's saying, I want to be able to buy that meme or I want to be able to buy that NBA top shot uh, moment. I want to be able to buy this digital thing that I believe is going to have ass uh, more value and I'm going to speculate on that value. And I'm going to speculate based on the artist. I'm going to speculate based on its popularity. I'm going to speculate based on the fact that money, the money supply is growing and we're printing more money and inflation is going to go up. I'm going to speculate on a thousand one different reasons, but I'm buying it as a vehicle, one, because maybe I care about the art, but two, because I think it can make money. And the reason it's valuable is because it's inherently scarce, right? There's only one token that could represent that one thing. Only one person or one wallet or one entity can own that NFT. Now, you can buy it as a corporation and buy an NFT as a corporation, and then there's multiple entities that own that one unit, but either way, it is attributed to a single 
node or a single wallet on the blockchain, if that makes sense. And the blockchain is something I or anyone cannot change. Now, yes, you can take over 51% of the entire network and that's almost literally impossible or would cost trillions of dollars. It's, or it's just, it's unreasonable, right? You couldn't really do that, okay? Um, so let's not talk about the security of the network as a whole. Let's focus on the value that it removes the power from me, specifically me, and or any one person in the community and puts that into a very clear agreement that could be run as a smart contract that enables us to mint NFTs. And we can mint that by even making little art pieces or tokens or membership badges and actually sell you, and I say sell you because that's kind of what it is, membership into our 150 person community because we do not plan on making this physical community at Valhalla as is today, bigger than 150 people. I talked about why that number, it's called Dunbar's number. Watch the other episode if you don't know what I'm talking about, okay? Long story short, we have an inherently scarce amount of space. There's only so many gatherings we can host. There's only so many people we can invite to have all the benefits that we're gonna build because I can't build a thousand saunas or a thousand hot tubs or a thousand garden beds. I mean, maybe we can build a thousand garden beds given their size, but there's only a certain amount that we can host there's only a certain amount of people and events and ideas that we can bring to the table at this farm. So inherently, we are limited by our ability to supply membership and all the benefits that memberships come with. And already, we have so many people asking to be members. So what if instead of just paying for membership, like you would at a traditional service, buying a gym pass, like I said, buying a spa pass, and you only gain the benefits, but then there's no benefit for the fact that you've had loyalty. There's no benefit for the fact that you've done anything else. And what if you treated it more like season tickets? Like season tickets to the Habs hockey game or to an NFL team or whatever it is. Because season tickets, if I bought Habs or Canadians, you know, hockey season tickets, I can buy them every year and I could probably resell them for more because there's more demand than there is supply of tickets, right? So what that means is it allows me as an owner of those seats, or at least the owner of the rights to those seats, that I can actually earn money. Now, there's rules and regulations around scalping and other things, like you're not supposed to be able to buy them, resell them, then the point is it happens anyway. But what if you could do that at our farm? What if you decided that you're going to become a traditional member, pay 50 bucks a month and join our membership as a supporter or producer, whatever it is. But then you say, you know what? I'm long-term committed to this farm. I want to see my purchasing of the shares of this farm and the shares of this co-op because it's a legal co-op go in and go in as non-taxable money because you're buying, we're raising capital by selling shares. So it's not a revenue, and this is very geeky in the finance world, but it's not a revenue. It's actually a capital raise. And let's assume that we're going to sell these memberships at $1,000 each. So we have 115 spots. We pick those spots through members who then get offered to buy a share, right? So non-voting members that are just members that are gaining the benefits of membership without votes. Then we have some kind of process of choosing who we want to offer real membership to. When I say real, I mean kind of ownership to, responsibility to, and enable those people to say, I bought a share of this farm and that share value, just like the share values on the market, like buying a share of Tesla or Walmart or whatever it is, can rise. So now, if I buy membership today, because I believe in the long-term vision of the farm, I can make an, a contribution right now of $1,000, buy that share, but once we hit that 150-person mark, or even if we don't hit that 150-person mark, but we're not giving out more invites at that period of time, and somebody wants in, they want to be an owner, they want to be first in line to be able to purchase a piece of the land if, that, if our project can get to that point. They want to be the first in line to build their homestead. They want to be first in line to be able to uh, have a piece of the farm that they can invest in or have a, a plot of land so they can grow their garlic or their bees or whatever it is. If they want to join that and they want to kind of have an early access to that, and our farm has so much demand, so many people who want to participate, so many people that can come, but there's only so many we can have, then the value of that membership can rise beyond that $1,000 that we sold that one chair for. 
and it could rise to essentially an infinite amount of money based on how much people are willing to pay for it. But instead of that always having to go back to the farm and then sold back to the next person, what if we created an NFT where we create a win-win scenario both for the investor and the farm and the person coming in who wants to buy the membership from that other person? So let's assume that our farm is doing amazing, the community is thriving, everyone wants to join, and there's no more memberships to give out. All 150 spots are sold, and the only way in is if somebody else wants out. Great. Well, now the price starts to rise, rise and rise and rise, and eventually it hits a target, maybe let's say $10,000, where one of the members is like, you know what? I love this farm. I really think I'm gonna take my time and energy elsewhere. Uh, I'm not really using my membership benefits or whatever. I'm willing to sell at 10 grand. That makes sense. I made 10X my money. That sounds great, good to me. Let me sell you the NFT, transfer the deed and all the things that go with that deed, AKA the smart contract as well. And that smart contract in and of itself can bake in that when it's resold, just like an artwork, right? So the just do it over there, made by Germ D, one of our members of our farm and a phenomenal artist, one of my best friends. I could sell that right now. He sold me this canvas for a price. I could sell that, pri that canvas for 10 times the price, but he won't get any benefits from it now. I can kick him back something as a friend, but if he sold it to a total stranger and they sold the canvas for more, he doesn't get any benefits from it. But with an NFT or a smart contract, just like NFTs being sold on art online, you can also attach a royalty that if you sell the membership in the future, you give a kickback to the original seller or the original minter of the NFT. And that minter can choose 10%, 20%, whatever it is. So let me go with simple math here and say it's 20%. So you bought it for $1,000, you sold it for 10,000. When you sell it for 10,000, 20% goes back to the farm, aka $2,000, and 8,000 goes to the person who bought the NFT or bought the membership and now got to resell it and make a, 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 a profit. They claim their profit on their taxes or whatever it is. They, they get whatever it is. They were able to invest in the farm early because they believed in it and they, they found about it. Now they bought a membership. They went through the process of joining membership. It's not just purchasable. It has to be invite, invited as well. But let's assume they qualified, they invited, boom, now they made money. So we created a win for them, a win for the farm, and a win for the person who's willing to pay $10,000 to walk in because they see the value of the membership, right? And that value is like the same value you would see in a mastermind, right? I would pay... $10,000 or $25,000 to join a mastermind? Here's why. It depends who's in the mastermind. It depends what kind of business I can get out of it or it depends what kind of growth I can find in it. It depends what the value is to me as an entrepreneur or the value is to me as a person, no matter what the value is. So whether that's a personal growth thing or a personal growth story, or it's just an investment into a network that I know that if I pay $25,000, i will probably go to one of their events or I'll show up with some of the online calls and that will make me more than $25,000 then it becomes a no-brainer. It becomes an investment, not an expense. See, buying a membership to a spa is an expense. It, it has benefits, but it's still an expense. Buying membership and ownership is an investment that can pay you back if you believe in the long-term vision of the farm. Therefore, aligning you, if you're the person who's gonna buy it, and me together. And it's giving you and transferring to you a sense of responsibility, a sense of ownership, a sense of, well, actually, you know what? I am willing to invest in the wood at the farm because if the farm grows and the business of the farm grows, so does the value of membership and there. So, so does the value of my, my, membership, my, my investment, right? And I say my, your investment, the person who bought it and my investment because I'm also one of the members. So then we all are aligned to collaborate, and then we start to operate at a different speed than just the speed of one investor or the few investors that have a sense of ownership or have adopted a sense of ownership or adopted those agreements in those ways.